Hey, Nerd Herders, Dynasty Nerds back as we enter week six of the fantasy football season. We have a lot to talk about as we just received the death slap of injuries this week. I'm dressed all in black for a reason. I, I should be real sad right now, but I'm really excited for this episode because we're talking about somebody pretty great. Yeah, what's an underpay, an underpay today could be an... Wait, is that right? What's an overpay, overpay today, today could, could be, be your underwear, underwear tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> It's my own slogan. I can't get it right. <laughs> How about we just dive into the show? Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey. And he's Garrett Price. No no gap this time. Good job. And a little one. That wasn't yeah. bad. No, Compared to the gaps we've been getting. <laughs> it was no it was no no last week. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Three seconds in the show and you guys are complaining. Three <laughs> seconds. I've already had a bad enough week. We just lost running back one overall. We just lost wide, wide receiver one overall. Every people are banged up. People's running back twos went out uh for four games. People are dropping left and right. This it's a team. Beep, 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 beep. Psh, psh, psh. A war of nutrition. It's, it's, a, it's a war of attrition. And no this, one's eating their bananas. <laughs> no, not this year. <laughs> Got to stay nutritious. Uh, they're in a war of attrition. So it's one of those things where, you know, we say it all the time when we get through the summer, when you find these windows to compete in Dynasty Financial Ball, it's very crucial to go out and attack those windows and to make sure you get, like, those ancillary pieces that are the small trades that we talk about. Like, mm-hmm. you know, adding guys, even like a James Conner uh, to your roster, even just went down. But, you know, or Raheem Mostert. Somewhere along those lines, these guys can help back up so you can come sure. through by weeks. But these occasional injuries are going to pop up to say at the top of your league because unlike redraft leagues, as we all longtime players know, that the waiver wire is not an option for you. It's just right. trading and making right trades. And every week we try to cover some players they could possibly trade for, maybe the guys that would be on your waiver wire. But again, another big hit this year. Um, a lot of teams, I'm sure, thought they were contenders in the beginning of the year with you know big-time running backs like Nick Chubb. Um, hitting on guys like Devane, Devon Achan and having Justin Jefferson on your roster, it, it could turn real quickly. And not saying that your season's over when Justin Jefferson's going to miss four games or, you know, Connor's missed four games, but four games is 25% of your season complete. So better yeah. have better have something good or, or your season might turn turn awful. Oh, real quickly. ugly. Yep. And some things look good. Like, you know, Jamar Chase obviously listened to the po- podcast last week and he sure uh, slapped me in my mouth telling me, whoa, 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 whoa. Who are you going to trade me for in the first? A.J. Mm-hmm. Brown? Now there's no T. Higgins. And we've seen Jamar Chase roller coaster a couple times. Always was my wide receiver too. <laughs> Always. I stated that. But yeah. uh, I appreciate that. Something. I, I appreciate it. I come out there, I put a little uh, take out there and say, hey, don't show me the world. <laughs> he immediately comes out and just dominates with a 50-point game. You'll have that. Uh, so good for Jamar Chase. So we have some injuries to talk about. We have, um, I want to talk about a running back today. Is it <laughs> um, is it overpay today and underpay tomorrow? That's, I'm not excited about this segment about that. at all. Not at all. We got a lot of things Dreadful. to talk about in this episode. So before we get into these injuries and talk about some players here, I got to tell you about our friends at Underdog because they just up the ante. Woo. That's right. They have a brand new sign-up offer. So you also get your mystery pickup special, which you can claim once you sign up um, using the promo code NERDS. But right now, for a very limited time, if you use the promo code NERDS, <sighs> this is crazy. they're going to give you a deposit match, not for $100, up to $500. That's a lot. You can put $500 in your Perfect. underdog account, use the promo code NERDS, and they're going to give you a free $500 on top of that. You're also going to get your free pit mystery pick special. Once you do that, you go to the lobby and find out who you got. And on top of that, you're going to get a free uh, year to Nerd Herd. We're going to give you a hookie up. We're going to give you a year Hook subscription to Nerd Herd to give you the bonus podcast, Bam. access to all our tools. <laughs> That's what it reminds them every week. Every week. On the website. <laughs> uh, check it out. You know, definitely during come rookie season so far. We were talking about before the show so far. It looks like we crushed this uh, rookie draft class analysis. Only four weeks in, so this is we'll not see. like, like sounds super sweet. Five weeks so in. far, so good. Five weeks in. Um, so you get all the bonus content there. Use the promo code nerds at underdog, get free cash, win some money and join the nerd. Check it out. Get cool access. So let's jump into some of these injuries, uh, here. First one out the gates, a big one Oof. dynasty wide receiver. One overall wasn't my number one wide receiver for that's going to score the most points this year. That was Tyree kill. That was my guy, uh, for the so year. Curse Jefferson. That's what you're saying. Like, 
pumping myself up like I normally do. Uh, and <laughs> I, uh, I could tell. You know, Go so ahead. he's got the hamstring bad enough where he's going on IR. He's going to miss four weeks. To have, I don't know if that happens during the bye week or not, or if it comes after the bye week. But Jefferson, <laughs> um, it's a weird situation because what are the what are the Vikings going to do? You know, their, their, their season so far looks like it's going to be a, a real bad season. They're going to end up with a high draft pick. And a lot of people are saying, what you know, at what point do they consider trading Kirk Cousins? Which again, it's no easy thing to do. No, no. right? Their, He's got a note. bye week. By the way, is, is week thirteen, so, so he'll he'll, he'll, he'll come back in plenty of time. Yeah. So you know, Kirk Cousins got a no trade clause right there. So out the gate, he he, he did agree to a trade. What what um, is their record? Have they won? They won one game. One game. One, one game. Okay. Yeah, so they're, they're one in four. Uh, their upcoming schedule: Bears. So mm-hmm. should be a win, but. Bears have been playing a lot better lately. I think they have been. Campbell's back the 49ers right are going to roll them. Then the Niners. Yeah, yeah that's not going to be a game. Packers should be an interesting Who one. Who knows which Packers team shows up. And then up. Falcons should be an interesting one. And even after that, it doesn't it doesn't get any easier. The well, Saints it, well, have been it's playing more important, really well, too. Where do we get to October 31st, which is a trade deadline? Right. So getting up to there, it that's up to the Green Bay game. So three games against the Bears, the Niners, and the Packers. So if they lose two of those, now it is hard to trade a quarterback in season – um, it's not like it's a running back or a receiver. Like he has to know the entire offense. So yeah, that one, I, I don't really see. I don't see that happening. All I'm saying is Baker last year had like two days and he balled out for the Rams. He did. I mean, so he's, he's telling a, me there's a chance. He's an exceptional. And, well, and we do have a long ways. Species. We do have a long <laughs> ways to go in this season. Who knows? We do. Um, a lot could change. But, but realistically, it always kind of seemed like the Vikings were wanting to go this way. Getting rid of Zadarius Smith, uh, they they let Dalvin Cook go. Sure. Like, like it really seemed like we're not going to go for rebuild. But if it happens, it's okay. It really seems like the direction they're trending. And let's be realistic: if you're if you're the GM of the Vikings and you're one and four right now, you're saying what's the best case scenario for my team? We get five wins and I'm back with Kirk Cousins again, or we get two wins and I'm getting Caleb Williams, like. You have to kind of weigh some of those things. Now, obviously, the GM doesn't have full control exactly of how many wins they get and things like that, uh, in theory. Uh, but <laughs> we, we've heard of other front offices we doing some things. We may or have whatever. heard of some people uh, who have done some things. Force Kyle Shanahan to quit. <laughs> but all, all that all that being said, it, it will be interesting to see, especially, I think this week's the real kicker. We expect them to lose to San Francisco. Everybody's losing to San Francisco. They're powerhouse. You lose to the Bears this week. The writing could be on the wall. Yeah, that's bad. And it's it's at the Bears. It is. And so, they're playing a lot better these past couple weeks. They definitely have been, man. They, they've been kind of pulling their act together uh, ever since we kind of talked <laughs> talked bad about them. We're talking that. about them again today. Yep. Don't worry. Yep. yep. Nerd so we'll show, see. right? Nerd Hurt Show, yep. Yeah. yeah, so for me, I mean, this is a situation where it's just, does Justin Jefferson take his – full 100% time here. He didn't get his contract that he wanted. Uh, the team's in bad shape. I I wouldn't have my fingers crossed that I'm getting Justin Jefferson back right after four weeks. We know hamstrings oh, injure. I, the, yeah, the reports are always are already, hey, this is, this is not necessarily a four-week thing. If he doesn't feel right, he's not going to play. Yeah, so he's going to be out for a while, which means – Rookie Jordan Addison is going to get a bump here. KJ Osborne, yeah. who's been locked in mm-hmm. uh, in the starting sets over Jordan Addison, as is going to come in and be the guy here too. So he's another person to add. Uh, you know, when you look at trade possibilities for receiver, like a sneaky guy you might be able to get for you know a couple thirds that nobody would even think about is a guy like KJ Osborne who should slide into that number one receiver role. It won't be. Jordan Addison, and actually will be K.J. Osborne, and T.J. Hawkinson, of course, sure. uh, will be in the mix here, too, for and, a big bump. If you're looking for a cheap wide receiver, that's the route to go. That is a good That is a good route, and I think T.J. Hawkinson is going to be the main beneficiary, don't yep. you? I mean, that's oh, yeah. that's the feeling I get from this. saw, like, 150 targets last year. Uh, I think it's going to be a race between Hawkinson, Laporta, and Kelsey for the number one overall tight end. Uh, Kelsey's still most likely to finish in that position as long as he sure. stays healthy on a points-per-game basis. He's still, he's still the king of uh the coop and i know we, gary and i were talking earlier because we bumped uh i bumped laporte up to my dynasty tight end two overall and garrett bumped him to his number one overall dynasty number tight end. one i put him at the top spot if if you were to right now all right let's let's flip the script yes you have laporta yes i do is there any tight end i could trade you no i'd say f- exactly no. exactly <laughs> hawkinson you'd say no 
I have, I have Hawkinson at one. No, yeah. Hawkinson, Hawkinson. There's Hawkinson's that, interesting. Andrews is interesting. Yeah, but. Both those guys are interesting. Um, I think Hawkinson has a little bit more juice than, um, what's his name? Laporta uh, or Andrews? No, Andrews. Thank you. I, Andrews looks more plotting to me. Sure. Um, in, He's a big he, physical. He is, but even this year, for some reason, he looks a little bit more plotting. Number two overall in points yeah. per game basis is Mark Andrews, by the way. Okay. Um, so not not plotting. Well, he just looks. I don't know. He just looks a little bit slow to me. But he's. It, but it, I, I mean, more so. He's twenty eight. Laporta's twenty two. Sure. Um, I think the big thing here too to remember is Hawk, Hawkinson, Hawkinson 20, just turned twenty six. Twenty six. Right? Yeah. So you're talking about a four year gap there. But it's close. I mean, it's got mm. enough thinking. I mean, you said no to everybody. I there's a guy in one of our leagues at my new Nerdherd four point league or five point league actually, um, and he keeps trying to get Laporta. He knows I love Kincaid, and he keeps. Uh, offering me Kincaid plus a little this, a little that. And I'm like, listen, I already have enough Kincaid, Kincaid shares. I don't have enough Laporta to the shares. I yeah. want. I have a decent amount because I love this tight end class, and so we all know how much I attack the tight end position. And then I t- and I wrote back and I was like, man, honestly, I have. There's an argument for Laporta to be my number one overall dynasty tight end. Period. Um, and that was before I moved them to two. And he's like, what do I have to throw on top? And this is a, dr- a league where we drafted the future draft picks for next year in this startup as well. Um, and I was like, I want one six and Kincaid. It's a super flex tight end premium league. I'd want one six in Kincaid for Laporta. That's how. Wow. Like, and I wouldn't, wow. but I, I can't imagine anything less off of that that I would want. You know, I love Kincaid still, but there's still risk there. To me, sure. I feel like all the risk has been removed off of Laporta. Um, and he's safe to, if you had him as your tight end one overall in Dynasty, I have no problem with that. Uh, fits the scheme well. Even if Ben Johnson leaves this, after this year, he'll still have a good rapport with Jared Goff. I expect him to extend him. I don't think Jamison Williams will come in and take targets from him. He's just looked too good with the ball in his hands. Everything he's done with Iowa has completely translated Absolutely. to the NFL. Yeah, and Ben Johnson had a chance to leave last year and didn't. So, I mean, I, I, I could see a scenario where he just stays because he likes his situation. No, I think he did that because after the Lions go pretty far this year in the NFC or made the playoffs, he'll, he'll be able to pick He'll get any his job. pick as opposed to just settling for one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll I think that's a key. And then we he does a good job, maybe go back again. Maybe yeah. pulls that. Uh, maybe maybe he pulls the Josh McDaniels uh, route. We're just waiting for the absolute nah. perfect time, like the Chargers to open <laughs> it up. <laughs> How do we always do this? We were talking Matt. about Justin Jefferson. How are we on Matt Laporte? T.J. Uh, Atkinson. Uh, Dude, s- seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever many degrees you go there. Turn up the uh, oven. There we oh, go. Let's get, let's, let's get to Devon A. Chan. All right, Devon A. Chan had that knee injury. Real curious here because, like, again, he finished the game um, – well, he's was, he was on the sideline, the made yeah. some lateral movements. Now, he's not on IR yet. So that tells me a lot because it's still early. But if he doesn't go on IR, four weeks would be going right into the Dolphins' bye, and then they come back. So it'll give him six weeks for enough time to heal. So if they're feeling like this is just like a little MCL sprain and he's just out for two weeks, that's great news for HN. For sure. Uh, uh, Dynasty owners. If it's four weeks, then it might as well be six weeks. You won't see him for another six weeks because of the bye week. Uh, either cha- either way, it's a devastating loss for anybody that's had HN, um, got him so laying their draft as a contender and helped them propel them into these wins. Because now you're looking at Raheem Moster, who's absolutely been fantastic as well, been running, mm-hmm. I think, Dynasty Fantasy running back one, two overall. Uh, two or three, yeah, he's, he's yeah. in the top three. I think he's tied for the most touchdowns in, in the league uh, by a running back. So he's Seven. right there. Montgomery. Um, yeah. Jeff Wilson, they open up the, the, the comeback. Of it is. <laughs> yeah, he, he does sound like Montgomery. Um, so Jeff Wilson can come back pretty soon here. They just open that window for him to start practicing and come back. Maybe it's this week, maybe it's not. But even then, you're looking at probably the same split that HN had with Moster, where it was 50-50. And when it came to targets uh, in that route, Raheem Moster is actually the number one passing down back. When Jeff Wilson's on the field, carries are pretty much 50-50. When they get inside the five, uh, Moster doubled Wilson's carries in that category as well. So look for Raheem Moster still to uh, put up solid fantasy football numbers. But Jeff Wilson coming to IR will be a viable option just as A-Chain has been as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was McCaffrey that he's tied McCaffrey's. with. McCaffrey's. Um, he scored every game and had the four Teddy games. <laughs> Montgomery is, is one behind Okay. Um, in the rushing touchdowns. Although he missed two games, I think, and he's still that high. Montgomery. Yeah, Montgomery. 
Yeah. You can check out um, your waiver wire for Chris Brooks just in case something happens with uh, Jeff Wilson. Yeah, he's a bigger back. He's he's gotten a little bit of work in the offense, uh, especially in that blowout game. I think he got some some run. Well, I mean, the big news for me that tells me is that he was acting over Salvin Ahmad. Right. Uh, so that tells me enough where now if Jeff Wilson's not going to go this week in that offense, the way they use the so far the dual sure. running back system. Absolutely. If you just need anything at all, like you're in dire straits at running back, you can check your waiver wire for Chris Brooks of the Miami Dolphins, add him in hopes to get anywhere from 5 to 12 points potentially for that one week window. But every week counts, every W counts. I, I added him at the beginning of the season. Um, he was on our waiver wire in our oldest dynasty league, and I just needed a little bit of running back. So you're telling me there's a depth. chance. And I had Jeff Wilson. I was like, you know what? I'm throwing this guy on the bottom of my roster just to see what happens. And, I mean, I haven't got a chance to use him or anything. Um, I haven't had to but use you him. Might. But you never know. And this might be his opportunity to kind of show what he can do. Yeah, most of it's a hard sneeze away from being on IR for the year. So <laughs> this is usually know. around. This is usually right around when the wheels fall off. Yeah, this is the witch in You know, it, which is crazy because the guy's 31. He's had a 10-year career yeah. uh, in the NFL, going all the way back to even our Cleveland Browns days. Mm-hmm. And it just – he continually produces when he's on the field, just can't get on the field. And that's why I said, I was like, this could be that one year where he finally puts it together and stays healthy late in his game. And everybody goes back and look at the rushing leaders. Like, oh, Raheem Mostert. Oh, that's right. Remember how good he used to be? This is hurt mm-hmm. every single year. Uh, another injury, another big injury. Andy Richardson. Jeez. We're back for the Colts. So, guys, I've said it almost every single week. It feels like he's, he's missed. <laughs> he has left the game early 60% of his games. And Our, that's just 60% of the total games he this, missed. This one's, this one's worse, though, right? I yeah. mean, this is a grade. They're talking grade three separations. I've, had, I've seen some people with separated shoulders in this kind of magnitude. And it's weird. There's like an odd bone in the back that'll come like popping up and sticking up all yeah. goofy. It's not painful for them, they say. But it's weird looking. Um so that's what it sounds like he has. Are you guys concerned? <laughs> I, I'm definitely at the point now where I'm concerned. Okay. He's, he hurt that he's that shoulder three times in college. Yep. The same shoulder he's had problems with three times in college. Um, it has now come to the point where you said before, I've said, no, I'm not concerned yet at all. I'm concerned. Okay. Um, it, it's every single week so far in his, his career. Yeah. He, he was banged up in college at times. But again, I wasn't overly worried about that. I want to see how it translates to the NFL. You know, mm-hmm. He's a big, strong dude, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I really didn't think it was going to be that Sometimes much. Sometimes it's just certain ligaments, certain joints, certain things. If they're weak enough, it's it's not going to matter. Yeah, It really it, doesn't. He's out for a while, too. So I mean, this is throwing shoulder. Like, this is not a joke here. And, and um, I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know how that affects the functionality of throwing or anything like that. Um, but I would imagine there's got to be some effect because there's going oh, be to be some pain involved no matter what until he heals up. Well, and they're trying to decide between surgery or just rehab. Great, it sounds like grade four is just automatic, automatic surgery. surgery. So yeah. he's kind of like, like right in between. So it'll be interesting to see. Like, there's part of me, you know, for for the the, the part of me that has him on my teams that I'd like to get him back sooner. But you wonder if surgery might help prevent this long term. Yeah. So it's a tough call there. So as a dynasty player here, the question is, you know, we all sound we're a little bit concerned now, mm-hmm. right? Playing when he's going to be on the field, he's he's going to be a juggernaut with his rushing ability. I feel like going into this week, everybody felt the same way about Anthony Richardson too. Like he skyrocketed up Superflex rankings. How how where is your level of concern? Are you level concern of you're actively now going to try and trade him to make it look like that you're just like trying to fill this four week window of where you need a quarterback because this that's a move right like. If you do have concern about Anthony Richardson, you want to get out now, why the value is still extremely high. Right. Um, you don't have to get out where you're selling like it looks it's terrible. You get you could do it to make a lateral move with the impression that you're just trying to do it to fill these next six weeks if you're a contender any or mm-hmm. almost any any mode. Are you actively trying to sell them? And if you are, like discuss a couple options at quarterback that you might be trying to sell them for and what you can get for them on top. I I, I worry that now. It would, be, it would be tough to play play it cool and be like, oh, yeah, I'm not worried. I'm just – and maybe you can. Maybe you can pull it off. But my guess is you would probably have a better chance of selling him what you would want once he comes back. So if I if I were to the point where I was worried and I was willing to move him, I'm probably going to wait till he returns to try to move him as opposed to try to move him now uh, because most teams are going to want him. They, they're going to want to use him. Uh, but that being said – He's a really hard one to to gauge the trade market for because 
in some senses, he's proven it, but he hasn't. Like, yeah, it's it's yeah, only been a few weeks. He's just shown flashes. It, exactly. Flashed, it's yeah. not been in the time when he wasn't injured and during the games that he's played. Right. So, you know I mean? how much is somebody willing to give you for him? Like, like let, let, let's go through for a few names. I guess right now, would you rather have Anthony Richardson or let's start low, work our way up? Uh, Deshaun Watson. Would you rather have Deshaun Watson or Anthony Richardson? Anthony Richardson. Okay. Ditto. I figured you I knew your answer. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, so moving up a little bit, uh, Justin Fields. Would you rather have Anthony Richardson or Justin Fields? That's a that's a that's a closer one, right? That one's tough for me. Um, obviously, Justin Fields has shown his downside and upside both mm -hmm. both in this year already, and I feel like Anthony Richardson has has done similar. Um, he, he's shown that, you know, his health may be a con real concern, right? but when he's on the field, he, he balls out. So th that might be, that might be the perfect scenario where Rich is talking about, right? Like if somebody who, who his team has been decimated, they're already looking until next year. They have Justin Fields on their team. I think you could sell to them. Hey, let's do a little swap here. I'm going to, I'll take Justin Fields off your hands because he's going to start scoring some points mm -hmm. and you take Anthony Richardson's off my hands because he's not going to score any points for the next four or five weeks. In a rebuild and, and, the, and they're so close anyway, we're pretty much getting, a, getting the same player back and, and, and you could feel good about that if you, if you want to get out for injury reasons on the Anthony Richardson. So I, I do feel like they're very close. Um, and I don't know. I'm, may have those guys flip-flopping on, on different days, you know yeah. what I mean? Just depending on how I feel, that's how close they are. I think for me to come to – I'm very close as well, um, and I think I would love to see if I can get a little plus on top of that. Like, can yeah. I get Justin Fields in a second, 24 yeah. seconds, plus sweetener. Andrew Richardson? Just a little sweetener. Cause, and, that, and the question was, like, where does the plus start coming to effect? So my main question for you guys would be, like, would you take Brock Purdy in a mid-24 first – for Anthony Richardson. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it looks like you're making a desperate play, but you're really just trying to get, like, a solid player. Solid player back. Gonna, yeah. Uh, Brock Purdy would never score as much on a week-in, week-out basis on, our, on a points-per-game basis, probably Anthony Richardson. But at the end, at the end of the year, Brock Purdy's going to be extremely consistent. You're talking about a player, I know we're going to talk about in the next episode, but who's gone over 20 points for the last three games here. And... For a team to say they're not a contender, so like a top six, 24 draft, like they're excited to get another quarterback, right? Say they yeah. took Bijan at one, their team's a little bit better. Now they're going to finish anywhere between four and six, the way the league played out. Is that a move you would try to make? Try and get Brock Purdy plus a top six, 24 pick, which we know is going to be a really loaded class for Anthony Richardson, or is that too steep? Like I'm trying to gauge like how far would you go if you are I, nervous? I don't hate that at all because it, Brock Purdy at this point, Things can change. The The other shoe could drop and he turns back into a pumpkin or whatever. But at this point, he looks like a steady, at worst, high-end quarterback, too. And best case scenario, he's a mid-QB1 with, with how he's been playing lately. So he, I don't know to, that the production's that far off. No, I mean, to me, he feels like a Kirk Cousins who's in a better sure. offense. Yeah, yeah. That's you know fair. I, you know what I mean? Like that's what he feels like as far as he's just going to he's going to get you your points. You can you can depend on him. He's not going to have a bunch of three interception games or anything like that that are going to really negatively affect his his fantasy output. And that offense is just humming. You know what I mean? And and he's so he's got such a high floor. Mm -hmm. He doesn't necessarily have this huge high ceiling. He, he might have a couple of crazy games where, sure. where everything works out. It's going to have to be everything with his arm. He's not going to run much. No, yeah. It's going it's to be like a couple dump off passes to McCaffrey that he turns into big plays sure. and stuff like that. And we're going to talk about Brock Purdy next show, so I don't we want to waste all that. So like, take that. We'll piggyback off of that. But, I mean, that's it. That's where I'm talking about with Justin Herbert. Because there's two court uh, – uh, Anthony Richardson right now being out. If I if I was somewhat still a contender, like where are you going to – like I'm going to look at teams that aren't contenders. I would take Lawrence over uh, – Anthony Richardson, yeah. So would I. Yep. Close for me. Okay. Yeah, I would take Tua over him. Um, I would love, but I think I think the thing that I would love personally as a dynasty owner, because you're not getting CJ Stroud plus. You might be able to flip him equally, but you're not getting plus at this point. But I do think a guy like Brock Purdy plus a first. And I do think a guy like Jared Goff plus a first is very, very feasible. And I think I think Goff's an easy one. You I can think, do that. Yeah, an easy a lot you easier. might be able to get CJ Stroud plus. You I, might. I would try. I mean, I'm because I I don't know if people view I don't know who they view higher at the moment, Brock Purdy or CJ Stroud. I'm guessing it's pretty close. 
Yeah, well, these injuries uh, every single week, it's 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 you're looking at something that might turn again. It could just be a one early part of his career thing we never talk about again. But there's a chance it's a consistent thing, which will always ding his value a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I'm kind of looking to see if I have Anthony Richardson. What to me would look like a slight overpay that I would be happy with. Not to the community that I would have to be let, happy let, with. Let me ask one more player just just because it's interesting because we've dealt with similar things with him over the past couple of years. Lamar Jackson. Would you rather have Lamar Jackson or would you rather have Anthony Richardson? I'd rather have Anthony Richardson, I think. It's close. Because I I, I have a – it just doesn't look like Lamar's going to have an opportunity to get done with his arm. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. It he like, did just sign that big deal, he so did. he's going to be there for a while. You know what? Andy Richardson's gonna big be, freaking deal. <laughs> yeah, and Richardson's going to be. The, I mean, he's a first round pick. He's going to be there for just as long as that uh, that deal. Lamar contract is yeah, up. Absolutely. So it's, to me, that, that's really close. Obviously, if I'm a contender, I want Lamar right now for his rushing. Because that's too. the thing. That's one of those deals where you could make that where you say like, I just need the production right now. Yeah, I think I would choose. I really think I'd take Anthony Richardson slightly. There. I, I agree. I think he does have a slightly higher ceiling. But it's it's slight though, right? I mean, sure. I'm trying to how how old is Lamar at this point? He's not that old. Uh, 26. He's 26, 27, 26 so, yeah. years old. It's close. Uh, yeah. I think I. Oh God, it's a tough one. This one, this one is tough because I've, it's the same issue in, in my brain. I've gone back and forth three times. I've <laughs> I've tried to say Anthony Richardson, but then I went, no, I would yeah. rather have Lamar. No, I'd, it's tugging at me. So that one, that one's a hard one. I would, it's I would have to, flip. I would have to sit down and really think that one through. And maybe even start digging into some stats on that one before I can make a decision. Yeah. Here, here's a question: Would you offer Anthony Richardson in your first for Justin Herbert, or is that too pricey for you, boys? I would. I think I'm good with that. I would do it. I might. Yeah, I, I might. Would. I would. As long as I'm a contender. Yeah. And oh yeah. This is as long as I'm a contender. Not like it's not like you're giving up. Two quarterbacks right. for Justin Herbert. You're giving right. up quarterback and then another player. And then a receiver. If, leader. if you're super flex tight end premium, um, and you have if you think there's even a 50 50 chance for you to finish in the top six, like you gotta hold that first. Yeah. Like you have to hold that first. This class is gonna be by the time it's all said and done when we talk about this class, it's gonna be so low at quarterback and probably quarterbacks going to the top ten outside of the receiving talent and tight end talent, a couple of running back good spots we're gonna see mm-hmm. that the top six could be Pretty much four quarterbacks, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Brock, Brock Bowers, Bowers like yep. in a Italian Premium League. So at six, you Impact get Brock players. Bowers, yeah. who has a chance to, by this time next year, be the number one dynasty tight end over. He's more talented than Laporta. Um, he's going to be one of the best. Ta- he's going to be one of the most talented tight ends we've ever seen. Yeah. Probably since, for me, Hawkinson and Kincaid were the two best tight ends that I've scouted um, or watched tape on. And Pitts. Yeah. Oh, and Pitts. Yeah, I'm sorry. And Kyle Pitts. So like, He'll be in that category there. So we got a couple more injuries to go. Let's try to see if there's anyone else. (laughs) Get through real quick. Uh, James Conner, he goes to IR. Hey, Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You skipped Daniel Jones. He's got a neck thing. He's probably not president of the fan club anymore. Yeah, what the hell, man? He's got to, dude, you see his offensive line? It's like freaking Swiss cheese out there. Which is, I think, notable. (laughs) <laughs> that, we should, that it says it's clean MRI right now. <laughs> but a week from now, who knows? Maybe that neck injury is back because he's getting drilled again. Again and again. And, and, again. and this is, for him, This he was out. He finished, He was on IR two seasons ago because of the neck injury. This is apparently a different neck injury. Um, but still, that's two That's two thus far, Shooter. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can count. Dude, but that's, that's, that's two neck injuries. That's bad it news. Is. I mean, he's got a long neck. Well... It's no, it's no Mike a, Lennon. Yeah. But. It's not like nobody. I mean, that's a brontosaurus <laughs> you're talking what's the about. Two, Come on. That's the guy, guy. I can't even remember his name already. From uh, the Houston Texans. Oh, Davis Mills? Davis Mills. He's, he's got Davis a long Mills. neck, the guy, oh, the guy's already flushed out. He's more <laughs> of a giraffe than a brontosaurus. But, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh, so, Daniel Jones, he'll be okay. Fixed we'll offensive line. Guy has no chance whatsoever. It's pathetic. The offensive line? I can't watch. I cannot watch the Giants this year. Dude, they're like when, really bad. when they're on TV, I'm like, nope, I can't. Even, it's every single play he's getting pressured. It's horrible. Yeah, dude, he's about as safe as like a porcupine handing you a condom. Like, you, you wouldn't trust that, <laughs> would you? No, no, I, I definitely wouldn't. Yeah, neither First would I. First of all, I would say, porcupine? <laughs> Where did yeah. you get this condom? What? <laughs> Why are you handing me things? <laughs> you seem really intelligent. Obviously, you've never uh, read uh, children's books, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time there. 
Yeah, safety first. Yeah, condoms. <laughs> That's how I feel about the Giants' offensive line. <laughs> first thing that pops in my head. What Sorry. kind of children's books yeah, did you, you read, read to your kids? Weird. I don't know, man. Books, man. On Twitter, I see they read some pretty weird books these days to these kids. So I'm not putting anything out there. Porcupine with condoms. Hey, kids, do it safely. Oh no, it hit my head. <laughs> Yeah, let me get another I one. I thought he was going to go Sonic the Hedgehog or something on us. <laughs> no, that's like nice flowing light. You ever see that guy run and then do the little circle thing? Okay. Yeah, dude. That porcupine does that. They're going to go get those gold coins. They're going to get stuck yeah. in a rock. Oh, man, We're way off the rails. Again. James Conner. <laughs> official on IR. Yeah, officially on IR. Uh, so this is not, not a good situation. They picked up Tony Jones, uh, who, who had a good game, or okay game with the Saints, but the Saints caught him. Yep, now so that, not good um, enough. Now that Alvin Kamara is back. So... Right now, they bring in Tony Jones. They have, um, who's looked really good, is, oh, I can't remember uh, his last name. Amari Demicardo. Demicardo. Yeah. yeah. So, he's looked really good. They're about to get Ke- uh, Keontae Ingram back. Correct. Now, Keontae Ingram started the beginning of the year as the backup mm-hmm. to uh Has never really James Conner. Conner. flashed or shown anything, though, right? It's, I mean, it's only second year, but yes, it, it's not like he's blown anyone away. It's not like one of those backups where we're waiting to see him play. Right. He's been there. Um, <laughs> he's been on the roster. Physically present. <laughs> He offers nothing on third down. He offers nothing in the passing game. And Amari Shout out to Ingram. Here. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, Amari Demicardo, he is our third down running back, even with James Conner there. And he's been pretty electric uh, so far in his last Boogie couple of games here, too. So check your waiver wires. Amari, that's with an E, E-M-A-R-I, Demarcado. Undrafted, and, undrafted rookie out of TCU. Yeah, he's looked pretty good so far even c- coming in here. And then Kia T- Keontae Ingram. Keontae Ingram. Ingram present. Uh, he's going to be back here very soon. I know he had a neck injury, but he may be back as soon as this week. And then, of course, Tony Jones. All worth flyers. I think Demicardo is the best pickup there in Arizona because with the team consistently trailing in games, he's going to be on the field in two-minute drills trailing. It's not going to be Ingram. So if you're looking for any kind of fantasy uptick, that's a great waiver wire pickup. Um or even a stash you might be able to get for like a fourth round pick somebody picked off their waiver wire to add to your roster for the next four to five games where he yep. probably he's probably gonna get you about ten points per game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no likely. doubt, man. That's it's it is a nice little uh quick stopgap type of guy. So then we have Tank Dell, he's got a concussion, unlikely to play in week six, so monitor that. Don Kincaid, he's got a concussion as well, so we gotta see how that plays out. Then Khalil Herbert's got the high ankle sprain, which is mm-hmm. never good. That's multiple weeks here. So right. we know Roshan Johnson left the game with a concussion as well. His status is up in the air. But with 10 games between kickoffs, there's a very good chance that Roshan Johnson now ten is... D- 10 days. 10 days until kickoff. Yeah. Um, there's a very good chance uh, Roshan Johnson's going to clear the concussion protocol, mm-hmm. get in there and be the guy because they also lost... Um, Travis Homer to a hamstring Correct. injury. Now they have Dante Foreman mm-hmm. who's coming off, but Dante Foreman, I mean, this is somebody who has been inactive. He's been inactive for yeah. the most part. So with with Foreman being a healthy scratch, going all the way back to things since with week two, two, Johnson's finally get the time to shine and show if he could be the running back here and actually steal the job from Khalil Herbert and see if he can get the job back. So this is a great opportunity for him. Huge opportunity so far. I mean, this is somebody who's averaging four point nine yards per carry. Um, he's got um, a way, he's already got more big plays than Khalil Herbert. And, and, t- the, and there, are, there were plus. rumors that Roshan Johnson was going to get more more carries going forward, and then Khalil Herbert kind of exploded for the mm-hmm. past couple of games. So I think that kind of got back So we'll see. Roshan Johnson might get exactly what you were saying, his opportunity, finally. And he's got it's a good time to get it because yeah. he's got a good schedule coming up here as well if this is a player you're interested in trading for. Uh, they play the Vikings again this week. The Vikings are like really middle of the road uh, when it comes to stopping the fantasy football running backs. But after that, they got the Raiders and they got the Chargers, both in the bottom third. Um, Chargers nice. even farther back, way bottom of that third uh, when it comes to stopping the fantasy football running back here. So this is a good opportunity for him not to only get his opportunity, but actually put up some production uh, against some bad run defenses. So it's, like a, it's a bottom, good player to have. Bottom eighth? They are 26, somewhere right around there when it comes to stopping a fantasy football running back. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty bad. So not quite not, not, not quite good the bottom eighth. No, not the bottom eighth. I mean, there's, when you tell them the thirds, you, it's a lot of... It's close to the bottom eighth. Ten, so it would be the top of the third. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, good schedule coming up here. Yep. Anybody else you want to talk about that got a boo-boo? Uh, I mean, Kelsey had that low ankle sprain, um, was, a- was able to return to the game. He's practicing, but they're on a short week. So I, I wanted to put it out there, you know, pay attention. He 
he practiced on a limited basis today. I think he's going to plan on playing. But if I had Kelsey and it's Thursday night already, I would probably dial back my expectations. I would still start him because he's Kelsey. If my girlfriend um, is a billionaire, I wouldn't risk it. Exactly. Yeah. He might not be risking it anymore. No. No biscuit, no biscuit. <laughs> All right, before we talk about a couple more players here, the big the big guy we get to talk about here coming soon, I got to tell you real quick about our friends at Sleeper. We partnered with Sleeper. We have the app um, that's coming to the Sleeper app here very soon as well. And right now, Sleeper is really offering great ways to play DFS, where you can go out there and you win 100 times your entry. They really are offering the highest payouts on the DFS market. You can track your fantasy players and your Sleeper picks in real time. All you got to do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame, live, in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than your predicted stats. Only on Sleeper can you get up to 100 times your payout you can share with your friends and get rewarded together use the promo code nerds and they're going to match your deposit up to a hundred dollars on your first time deposit terms and condition conditions do apply so check that out um and right now i said we're trying to integrate the dynasty gm into sleeper their mini we're gonna be the first dynasty app on there uh you're gonna be able to use the league analyzer and the trade calculator in a limited form if you are a nerd herd member and you're part of the dynasty gm you get full access on sleeper which is pretty sweet and we're going to try and offer a couple of things like maybe even sending trades through the app, which would be pretty sweet. Ooh. So excited about that. Yeah. And we also want to make sure we mention FFPC. I do want to say I have an FFPC team and it is looking pretty, pretty good. Nice. Although it'll look even better once Devon Chan comes, comes back, comes, comes back. But I did get Jonathan play. Taylor back this week. So hopefully just Zach Moss. But did is you no longer? A thing. He was back, but was he, he was back? back ish. He was present. Six. <laughs> John the Taylor, present. Present. Uh, but FFPC launched in 2010, home to the largest high-stake dynasty league community in fantasy football. But the more important thing right now is the weekly challenge. No draft, no salary cap, no convoluted rules. 10-team league, 30-team league, or even a 100-team contest. You pick your players by 1 p.m., and you let them ride. Results will be determined by the total points accumulated by each lineup entry. So if you use the promo code NERDS, you can get $25 off that $35 entry. That means, I'm not great at math, but that means you only got $10 you have to pay yourself. Hmm. It's not a lot. That's not. Not a lot. Or you could do the $200 entry using the promo code NERDS. Go to myffpc.com. That's myffpc.com. Use the promo code NERDS nerds for that $25 off. So before we get to what Jared or <laughs> wow wow what Garrett cannot wait to do. And I didn't even bring it up. Rich brought it up. I just was very glad to put it on the sheet. Yes. Um I di- I did want to mention that the Jets today are are Van Jefferson was traded today. I don't know why I said the Jets. The Jets, I don't know. I think um, that's a wide receiver coach. He is Jets. and that was in my brain. Um but Van Jefferson traded to the Falcons today. And I don't know. I mean, I wrote in here to be funny. If a tree falls in the woods <laughs> and the team he's traded to doesn't throw the ball, it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, one less player for them not to target. He's a he's a hell of a blocker uh, wide receiver. I mean, that's true. So this is going to work out really good for the running game. I mean, Bijan's excited. Yeah, they, they've used Kadero Hodge a decent amount, but outside that, they have Mac Hollins there, Scotty Miller. Sure. Nobody's getting anything. I mean, Kyle Pitts had a a game. We're going to talk about Kyle Pitts next show. Uh, and even Drake London, their number one guy. It's between those guys on the carry, but they, like you said, they don't throw the ball. Right. Uh, be fair, though, you know, Van Jefferson is a savvy route runner, um, and they're going to have a different quarterback in 2024. So, and it could be anywhere from maybe, but Desmond Justin Ritter Fields, put the team on his back there at the end, led the team to victory. Just, Kyler Murray. That guy stinks. Yeah, he's <laughs> not good. Somebody who could be a, like a, a start, a backup quarterback that might come in when your game, but Justin. Desmond Ritter is not the answer to go. I, you win a I agree, but we'll see. And and yes, to be fair, he, he is. He, he doesn't stink on normal terms, but he's not a starting caliber. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, but it'll be uh, or three and two. I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous. We'll find out. We're playing yeah. too well. So I want the thing I texted the guys today was on the, what I want to talk about during the show was. Tajay Spears. Ah! And I know I know that would get Gary Huzzah! excited, but I've officially reached a point where I would give, if I'm a contender, a 24 first for Tajay Spears. And I honestly would probably throw a little bit on top of that if I had to as well. This is a player that I had as my running back number four overall in this draft class. I had it Bijan, uh, Jameer Gibbs, and then Devon Achan 
I had Gibbs and HN closer than most, and then I had Tajay Spears. But then I had Tajay Spears closer to HN um, than most. And we all know how much Garrett loves him. He got a lot of flack by uh, taking him in the first round of our startup draft right after the NFL draft was actually yep. still going on. And he got a lot of flack for that. This is a player that we've actually liked his tape a lot coming into the season. And right now he's come off his best week yet where he was running back eight on a year. Saw a season high of 11 touches there um, as well when they're playing the Colts. And when we actually look at how he's been used overall, I mean, his touches are going up and up and up. Like he's over 30% now where we saw him for the first couple of weeks, he was about 20% usage. Now he's closer to almost 40% usage here for the Titans. And he's really just outperforming um, Derrick Henry when you really look at the numbers. I mean, Henry's rushed so far. He's at 86 t- rushes. He rushed for 328 yards so far this year. So he's averaged about 3.8 yards per carry. Um which for him is the worst he's ever done, right? And we saw his uptake actually increase last year because of how involved he was in the passing game. Correct. Which, right. you know, so Henry finished pretty well last year because of how involved he was. Well, now with Tajay Spears in the mix, that's changed because Spears is actually rushing better. He's average, compared to 3.8 yards per carry by Derrick Henry. Tajay Spears is averaging 5.8 yards uh, per carry when he gets the ball. And when you look at the snap count, when it comes to the passing yards even, uh, when they're running routes, Spears is 20. Hunter Henry, uh, Derrick Henry is 14. And for me, if you're going to take away some of that um, passing usage for Derrick Henry, that immediately hurts him for even what he did over the previous years. And now that he's yards per carry, which, again, he's an older running back, bigger guy, tons of tread on his tires, has, a, has had a phenomenal career over these last couple of years, this is all just pointing to me that, hey, Tajay Spears is slowly going to become the guy here. The more that the Titans slowly, if they do fall out of this, mm-hmm. the more likely that Spears will just get more carries anyways and increase the odds of when we talked about Derek Kirk Cousins getting traded, very unlikely. A running back, however, definitely a guy like Derrick Henry, who's on the last year of his deal. Perfect candidate. To get perfect traded. candidate to be traded by October 31st if the Titans are out of it. So, I can easily see Derrick Henry getting traded at the deadline just because they have Tajay Spears. It doesn't even look – they sell it by trading Derrick Henry for whatever they get, fourth-round pick, whatever. Hey, we felt we were in this opportunity that you know we believe in Tajay enough where we want to give him an expanded role. I and mean, we can all hear the news, co- news conference yep. now, right? We've, we've heard him before. Uh, that's so exactly the kind of original. Tajay thing. Spears will be the starting running back for the Tennessee Titans next year. Yep. To me, I could say that pretty confidently. Nothing's 100% in life, but I would bet the farm on that. So giving up a first plus, and whatever that plus may be, whether it's a first and third, um, even if you had to go as far as if you're a contender, a first and second, which sounds crazy, they have an opportunity to get a young running back who we loved his film, and then it, it translates already to the NFL, splitting time with a uh, running back we thought he'd get not a lot of time to split carries with. It's put me in the camp of I'm ready to do what it looks like an overpay day is an underpay tomorrow for Tajay Spears. Every opportunity he gets, he makes um, he makes the most of it. And it's yes. not just his run ability. He's out there on third downs, putting proper blocks on, yes. pass protecting. He is playing the game of football at a very high level right now. And, you know, the the, the noise is slowly creeping on Tajay Spears. So this window seems pretty limited to me. That's why I want to jump on here today and say, go into your league, offer a 24 first. If it gets rejected and you're a contender and you need a running back, which we all do, nobody has enough running backs where you, no. you're comfortable, right? I have no problem offering that first and a second uh, as a max pay, as I would pay for Tajay Spears. And I think we're, by the time we're at this point next year, I feel like that's going to look like a great value that you got because that price won't go any cheaper to have a running back that you have in your stall for about three to four years. Yeah, I'm I'm loving this. It's the second you sent it, uh, I was giddy uh, because I've I've – loved this player I, I think his talent and and i talked about it when we were doing the the nerd score with jared my tape grade score wise came out identical to gibbs and i know i heard it all when that happened you're blind i don't know what you're seeing blah 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 and how will it all pan out i don't know but everything that i saw on tape from explosiveness to elusiveness to things that he can do in the open field to how he catches the football all of that is looking the exact same as it did in college. He's still doing it mm-hmm. here at the NFL level. So I'm I'm all about this. And the good news is right now you might not even 
have to do that. The narrative is growing. He scored his first touchdown this week. Uh, he was very involved in the passing game, four receptions for 35 yards, did some good things on the ground, and he's been averaging seven or eight carries a game, even with Derrick Henry there. So he is being uh, utilized quite a bit. But I went back uh, even just, just the past few weeks, and like I said, the price is probably slowly increasing, but this is from October 3rd on. Ty J Spears for Tyler Lockett. Ty J Spears for a 24 second. Ty J Spears for a 24 second. Ty J Spears for a 24 second. Uh, Ty J Spears for a 24 second. Like these are not, you're not a broken record. Those are all, <laughs> those are all, yes. The, the, the podcast isn't skipping. Uh, and, and one even yesterday. So after he scored the touchdown, still Ty J Spears for a 24 second. So you wow. might not even have to give wow. the first. Would I be willing to? A hundred and ten percent. I actually traded after week two or three. Now, I didn't have too many places to trade for him because I had him a lot of places. But right. one of the few places I didn't have him, I traded Traylon Burke straight up for Tajay Spears and felt really good about it. And I even, you know, we were messaging back and forth and he's like, I don't know, Tajay could blow up. And it's like, I get that. And on the flip side, traditionally trading a third round running back for a first round wide receiver is not a good deal, but that's how much I believe in Ty J Spears ability and what I think he's going to be able to do in the workload that he's going to get moving forward. Yeah. And, and I mean, the only question I have is because I love everything that he's doing is, you know, if everything plays out the way uh, Rich had explained earlier, Derek Henry moves on. Is he the type of guy that can, that can handle that kind of work, like the, that increase of the workload to be like the man? Kind of how we saw it, it's hurt Tony Pollard. Exactly. We saw Tony Pollard's and all these carries and be the man when really he excelled on the on the Venus. limit on the limited stuff, the big plays because he, he's not he's not big enough to be a guy that's going to wear down a defense or anything like that. Um, so that that's the one question in the back of my mind is he sure. is he a player that's always going to need another guy that's a bigger bruiser type that's kind of going to need to grind between the tackles in order for him to get out in space and and be explosive and and that's kind of how. That's kind of how I see him, and I don't know if that's how the Titans see him or if that is true reality or not. Well, I feel like my first and second now seems like something I need to kind of take back a little bit here. Definitely for him going for mostly for a second. Um, I feel like a first, I, I still feel very comfortable with a first, though, giving up that first. So would you feel comfortable give, with even that worry, giving up a first for Tajay Spears? Do you feel confident that he'll be the starter running back here for the Tennessee Titans next year? That's what I don't know. Like, uh, if they don't, if if they see, what happens if if this happens? What happens if they get rid of Henry? They see that Tajay maybe isn't the type of guy that they that can run an offense and be the main guy. And then they go out and draft another guy in the third round. And now all of a sudden, there's these two running backs that they drafted in the third round. And this like guy, and all yeah, all of a sudden, this big this big bruising back is if, more if than just If it makes you feel big, any better, the because I think I think the Pollard uh, Zeke comp to Henry and Spears is makes perfect sense. Yeah. Perfect sense. In in that situation, Tony Pollard was an RB1 last year with Derrick Henry or with Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Yep. Even though he was slowly taking over. Yeah. Um and this year even by himself, even though he hasn't been as successful, he's still running back 11 on the season and that's partly due to how bad the Cowboys have been this past two weeks. So yeah. in that scenario, Pollard's out RB1 either way. Right. So whether they give him the full workload or he's only getting 12 carries and six targets a game. I still think he has the talent, like like we've seen out, out, out of an Alvin Kamara or guys like that, where they don't necessarily need 25 touches a game. They need 15, 16 touches a game. And, and a, uh, half of those in the passing game. And a Latavius Murray type or sure. a Jamal Williams type Which to be is, on the roster. He's just type to find. Yeah. So yeah, I right. think yeah. either way, I still feel good about him putting up high-end RB2 numbers or low-end RB1 numbers at some point in the near future. Which is definitely worth a first-round pick. Yeah, yep. you, you've probably gotten me convinced to the first round, but I wouldn't go above. Go much more? Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll really that back in. I would not pay a first and second, but I would pay a 24 first if I'm a contender I need a running back, which we all do. And remember, next year's class is going to be pretty loaded. Right now, the biggest question mark is how much talent will be at the running back position. Mm -hmm. Um outside of guys like it's Trivian true. Henderson. So uh, a player to, to, to go out there, maybe put some offers on and see how it plays out. Is so Travion Henderson do. actually really that good? Uh, there's there's definitely some question marks. There's definitely okay. – he's one of the top backs in the class. Yeah. Uh, Raheem Sanders out of Arkansas is another one that's, you know, doing 
decent. Um, he's a bigger name, Ward uh, from Florida State. So there's there's some guys, but w- not even in the same stratosphere as what we were talking about with Brees Hall and Bijan Robinson yeah. and the top back over the past couple. Classes. I mean, I don't know. I've I've watched some Trevian Henderson and been really excited, but I've seen some stuff and been really underwhelmed. He 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 looked the best as a true freshman. I agree. Yeah, and he's only so it's and this year he's only got a couple plays. He got a big outside run like. Two weeks ago, I think yeah. that he looked pretty good again. But yeah, he has been fine, fine. but not RB one that you right. would want. Yeah, like yep. in this draft class, he'll probably get, like all the running backs are get pushed outside. I mean, we'll see where the draft capital happens, but usually to the back end of this first yes. because you got I, you got some, you got neighbors when um, they when you got Keon Coleman when Ohio State's position. running guys out there that used to be linebackers at different schools that they just <laughs> brought in like that's bad news. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that that means you're really not doing. An excellent job. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get our last segment here. How about you guys feel about that? And let's wrap it up. Garrett, what do you got for us? Yeah, I think this is the the time of year that we are starting to start to see the trade market really develop, move forward. And these types of players that we're going to talk about while you're in contender mode are going to get increasingly more expensive week by week the closer we get to your trade deadline. So, Talking about maybe identifying some of these guys now, trying to get out ahead of the trade deadline, maybe save yourself an extra second or something like that along the way. So just kind of trying to see what would you be willing to pay right now? We're going to assume that these are super flex leagues, okay? okay. And, we're all, and we're, every team is going to be a contender, right? Every team we're talking about is in contender mode, so we don't have to specify, clarify. These are all for contenders. What would you pay for these players? And these are all veteran players that are older for their position. Fair? Fair. All right. Cooper Cup. What would you be willing to pay right now for a Cooper Cup? Or would you? I guess that's the first question. Would you go after them? Second question is what would you pay? So Cooper Cup, this is his first game back. And my biggest question was, like, how would Puka Nakua look with him back? And, you know, Cooper Cup comes in, out, catches eight balls for 118 yards. Uh, his 19.8 points was good for wide receiver 12 this week. Wide receiver 11 this week? Puka Nakua with 20.1 <laughs> points, and it showed me enough. I mean, Van Jefferson had got rid of um, Tutu Atwell. Yep. That was a fun run, but this is the Puka and Cooper Cup show That's going exactly forward. exactly how somebody predicted it before the year started. <laughs> <laughs> Not before the year started. Yeah, that was yeah, on my bold prediction. prediction. Was it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he had Puka Nakua. Good for bold you. Prediction show. I nailed a bold prediction. Good for you. So, <laughs> touche. Touche. I forgot about that. <laughs> so, for me as a contender, yeah, I mean, I feel like every player on this list you're going to mention, I would go after okay. as I'm a contender because I want guys that are going to give me good numbers, right? Right. And, it's, and I feel like I'm, I'm going to be pretty redundant here, but I would give a 24 first for Cooper Cup, and that's the most I would pay because he's 30, what, 30, almost 31 Let years me see. old? And he it, is 30 years old. He'll uh, he won't be 31 till June. Okay, okay. so let, let's maybe clean this up a little bit and, and streamline it. Three guys that I think are in a similar ish tier. Yep. Cooper Cup, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, and then let's throw Devontae Adams in there too. Are all four of them about the same in your eyes as to what you would be willing to pay, which would be a late first, or is maybe Adams the slight? One of these things is not like the others. So Adams would be the slight. Maybe pay be willing to pay a little bit more. Um, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would pay. Okay, let me let me retract that. The most I would pay for these guys, if I'm a contender, for all four of those guys, not Mike Evans, um, but for Keen Allen, Devonta Adams, and Cooper Cup, I would pay a first and a second for both those guys. You would pay uh, a first and a second. Yeah, because Keen Allen again. We, let's remember. Keenan Keen, Allen is the wide receiver one, right? Or you know, he was. He was. Headed, headed into the bye, he was yeah. wide receiver two behind Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. He's currently sitting with the bye wide receiver seven. With no Mike Williams on a team that wants to contend, Keen Allen's going to eat. He's going to be a top three probably fantasy receiver the rest of the way. He's less than a half a point on a points per game basis behind Tyreek Hill. Yeah. And so he, he, he might be my arguably my favorite target because I think he's the most acquirable between him, Devontae Adams, and Cooper Cup. I, I got... Um, key, in my high stakes league, I traded away Devonte Adams, and I got mm-hmm. Keen Allen. Um, I think David Montgomery, and somebody else, I can't remember. Nice. I remember we sat here and talked about it beforehand, but I got a little bit more for Keen Allen. Nice. Um, oh, Josh Palmer is what. Nice. Because um, he, I, the original offer was Puka Nakua, but he said, 
Uh, I'm a BYU guy. I think I'm just going to hold on to Puka. That, he's like, you pick either Puka or Josh Palmer. And I picked Puka. And he said, uh, last minute, can we just keep him? I was like, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> Which uh, I would have been an all timer. I go back there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, at first, I mean, Devonta Adams is currently wide receiver nine, and he'll probably live right around that top five to eight this year, only yep. because of the team around him. And Cooper Cup will probably be a wide receiver one the rest of the way, too. But I think the buy for me out of all those guys is definitely Keen Allen. Keen Allen. He'll probably be the cheapest of those options and probably outproduce all those and options. With no Mike Williams, he's he's the guy that's I mean, he's just gonna eat, man. There's gonna be so much there. So what about Mike Evans? So you're not willing to pay the little bit extra for Mike Evans then? I would pay if I'm a contender, I would pay a first for Mike Evans. Now, you could have got Mike Evans for first three years ago too, which is kind of crazy about it, but that shows you his value. You know, he's currently uh, wide receiver 15 overall, but he was just on by as well. 13, 13th in points per game. Wide receiver nine overall, weeks one through four. Baker Mayfield looks like he has a really good relationship there in mm-hmm. Tampa Bay to the point where like he might actually get extended there for a short-term deal it there. Could happen. Um, Chris Godwin's been balling out. We know Mike Evans is going to leave Tampa Bay this year. He's going to sign a decent deal. He'll be on a team next year where is most likely a contender. Sure. Not a not a bad thought process to think that Mike Evans could easily go to Kansas City next year. He is 30 also, by the way. To win a run. He is old. Same, same almost same age as uh Cooper Cup, couple couple months younger. So let's start there for a minute. Let me let me retract for people that might be newer to the show. Um you'll hear a lot of people say that's ludicrous to pay a first round pick for guys like Devontae Adams. Um maybe not Devontae Adams, but for like Mike Evans and Keenan Allen. Some mm-hmm. people go on Twitter and tell you that that's crazy. But those people aren't in the same position you are, and you're trying to win a championship. Mm-hmm. And that first round pick, if it's a late first round pick, is hundred percent guaranteed to be a 50-50 um shot at you having somebody you could even carry on your roster, mm-hmm. let alone start. You're in championship mode. We're entering week six here mm-hmm. in the NFL season. We're almost um, halfway through the fantasy year already. You're looking for players that not only can help you win, um, you're looking for players that can li- – that's it. Not, that's it. You're looking for players to help mm-hmm. you win this year. Yeah. And these are players that we're talking about they are going to finish as wide receiver ones – which is there's only 12 of those people out there. So for you to pay a first and then that helps you almost put you in the best position to win a championship. And then you do. And if it, and that's all they do is play this year and never again, which most likely is not going to be the case for any of these guys we mentioned. Well worth it. Well, of course it is worth it. Yep. So yeah, I have no problem paying a first for any of those guys. So, so the one, the one guy that I'm a little bit iffy on, and I think it's probably going to surprise you is, is Devonte Adams? Oh, so and, you think he you would you value him a little bit lower than the rest of these guys? And it's not because I I think he's fallen off a cliff. I just I I think that whole team is going in the wrong direction. Sure, and and you know they they eke out a win against Green Bay where it really neither one of those teams wanted to win or deserved to win. The game. It was an ugly game, and and he didn't look good. And how long until they're moving on to a rookie quarterback? And then he's got to break in another guy, and then we got to worry about if he's getting him the ball and all that kind of crap. He'll demand a trade. And so far, we've seen him perform with literally every quarterback he's ever been given. We have, but this just feel, this feels different to me for whatever okay. reason. Um, so that's why I have in my brain just a slightly lower value on him than those other two okay. guys, those other three guys. I think if you're targeting um, Devonte Adams, I think there's a much cheaper route to go. Much cheaper route to go. Don Devonte Adams currently wide receiver nine on the year. Mm-hmm. Who's wide receiver ten? Who? Adam Thielen. That was the next guy for on the, the list. Carolina Panthers. Yeah. And right now, he is the only wide receiver on that roster they get any faith in whatsoever. How this dare is, you, DJ Chark is on that team? Well, DJ Chark is just now finally seeing some more snaps. I mean, I think he was he was a little dinged up. Yeah. Well, Mingo's missed the last two weeks with the concussion. Lavisca Chanel is doo doo. I mean. And Lewis Chenault's a gadget player, right? I mean, like he's not ter- he's not a terrible football player. He's just a gadget player. He's yeah, not good for fans. Go go gadget flush my toilet. Yeah. Um. So for Adam Thielen, you might as well change him his nickname for the rest of the year to Oscar or Grouch because he's gonna get so much garbage time, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and this team is gonna be trailing, and Adam Thielen's the veteran that they gotta give Bryce Young. I mean, Bryce Young's looked like he, him and Lavisca are gonna become good friends. Like, stay away, stop rubbing off on my guy. Like, way too much brown doo-doo on his uh, hands right there. Stop shaking it. And for me, 
Adam Thielen is going to benefit here. He's currently wide receiver 10. Brown dude. You get Adam Thielen probably for two third round picks. Not green. Nobody wants no. him. No. no. What have you been eating? Oh, I know what you've been eating, Taco Bell fan. <laughs> um, there's truth to that. Adam Thielen is so affordable. Probably take draft picks out of it. There's probably a player with upside. Probably you have a probably have somebody like backup running back you can give somebody um, potential for Thielen. If he's not on a if he's on a rebuild team, then you're getting him for super cheap. Contender. Still probably attainable. 33-year-old Adam Thielen's still getting it done, man. He's getting it done. He's mm-hmm. a wide receiver 10. Will he finish the year as a wide receiver 1? Probably not. He probably had, not. He had one bad game, the first game. And ever that was since it. then, yeah. The team, gar- dude, Oscar the Grouch. Yeah. That's his nickname for the rest of the way for Adam Thielen. Because he's going to get his garbage time. Where does the poop hands come in? I just Oh, because LaVisca's doo-doo. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So his hands, brown, are, brown poop. his hands are also doo-doo. So then he's shaking hands with Bryce Young. It, it was a lot of steps to follow. I wanted to just get that out. Yeah. I just wasn't sure where the doo-doo hands came from. Yeah, well, it's, that's where it comes from. Okay, I get it now. It's the origin story. Thank you for the origin right. story. Sometimes uh, you need it. Let, let's let's touch on a couple other positions. Bye, I'm feeling bye, 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 bye. Uh, running back. Couple couple key names to maybe look at. Uh, slightly different prices on these guys, I'm guessing. But David Montgomery. Joe Mixon and Raheem Mostert. I'm interested for your guys' David Montgomery take because I have. You have a strong opinion? I've sent out trades and I've just gotten nothing back. So Okay. Yeah. Just to try to acquire him? Yeah. Dude, he is running back three overall despite missing week three. Yeah. His 20.2 points per game um, is running back six overall. And these are all great numbers, by the way. Yeah. And the, the only thing I can base this off of is how this system was run last year. Well, we saw Jamal Williams absolutely eat. Yeah. And they spent a high draft pick on a running back. Don't matter. But until this offense changes in a slight bit, David Montgomery is going to eat. Mm-hmm. And he's going to get the goal line carries. And he's probably going to finish the year as a running back one. And what I would pay for that is a second. Is the most I would pay for yeah. David Montgomery. Okay. And unfortunately, it's not going to get it done. It's not going to get it That's done. It's not going to get done. It's not going to get done. How about you, Garrett? If I'm a true contender, I'm I'm willing to pay that late first for David Montgomery. Okay. It, he The volume is king. Savvy, sexy. And man. he's just, he, he's getting a ridiculous amount of volume. For what it's worth, to just kind of show where his market is, uh, David Montgomery for a 24 first in Luke Musgrave. David Montgomery for a 26 first and John Mechie. David Montgomery for a 25 first. Uh, David Montgomery for a 24 first and 24 third. So it's costing you more than a first in a lot of ways. Yeah, and, yeah. and some of them are like you know a couple years down the road. But sure, I but, can't do it. But at this point, if you want David Montgomery, uh, the, I've I found one here that's two seconds. I, do um, I could probably David Montgomery for 24 that. first. So I sent out an offer for. Two seconds to somebody who has not won a game in okay. our league. And they and said no. They said no. Wow. And I just thought that That's was bad ownership. I just thought that was a bad decline of a trade. I don't know. I would agree. I just, I thought I was, it was so it was before this week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where um, he did it again. Where he did it again. It was after the, the it, maybe it was even before the three touchdown week. It might have been when he got injured. I might have even gone after him. Just thinking. Oh, wow. That, I can't remember. It, it could have been after the three sure. touchdown week. Um, but I sent it out thinking, all right, I feel uncomfortable sending this. Like, I feel like I'm but I need it. too much for David Montgomery not right now. <laughs> and then and then he rejected it. I'm like, wow. The worst. Okay. You're like, ah. you don't want to hit I send? I did like, not want to hit send. I was like, oh. I do that so many times. I've done it before, then I've immediately gone back and then... Revoke, revoke, revoke. revoke, revoke. I don't want that. Just no, kidding. no, no, that, that felt bad. It. That felt Fire's too bad. remorse. That felt way too bad. <laughs> well, then it gets rejected, and you're like, oh, dude, we're so far off. Yeah, this is just... This isn't even... Bo- it's not even worth my time coming yeah, back here. I get some of All these right. conversations on group texts and, or, like, chats and, like, group meetings, and you're like, well, where, where, where can we go? I was like, dude, we're so far off. This is never getting done. Yeah. Well, would you be willing, if you're a contender, and... This team that you're trading with is a little bit closer to the rebuild, uh, or at least middle of the road. Would you be willing to give your first if you get Montgomery in their second? Yeah, because I'm just sliding back in the draft. It's a big difference. Like I don't, I don't know. Longer, I people are always like, oh, you gave up your first. It's like no, dude, I'm just moving back. I'm in moving the draft. back six like, spots. I, yeah, it's 
Not that big. No, it could be one spot. <laughs> it could it could if, be one if spot. You win and they it, it, it off could be roster. ten spots. Yeah, yeah. It's I. It has to be something like that. I'm not giving a first for Montgomery, and he'll probably be a running back one this year. But I'm still for long term. And I know I just said a minute ago, like whatever it takes to. win. I was going to say he might have more longevity than Mike Evans, than Cooper Cup. It it is, but the position is so. Fluid and it, it's not even just the problem isn't just him huh. is that at some point this could flip and they just give Gibbs way more carries they, they could, did invest so much and love it so much that's exactly so that's, why I felt so dirty giving two seconds that's the only reference. reason why it's not him or the system no. he's in it's just it's what it's that sure. albatross right next to him and just because Jamal Williams did that to DeAndre Swift it's a different scenario where um, they didn't draft DeAndre Swift whatever I'm there but they brought sure. Jamal Williams in mm-hmm. you're right. And then they didn't spend the twelfth overall pick on DeAndre Swift. They sent a high second on him. There's a lot of different scenarios here, even though it all looks the same. So for me, I ha- I can't be that risk averse. I'd have to. I couldn't do it for a first, just for for this player in this situation. Okay. Like I have a hard time. Would you like, do a first for Joe Mixon? <sighs> no. I would. I think I'm still at the two second level for him. Okay. I would if I had to, only because he's locked in as with the like carries, the the usage, right? Yeah. He's just locked in, and for me, like he's probably gonna be like running back like fourteen to fifteen, right around there in a year, probably. Um, but that's enough for me to help me win. I would really need, I would have to be like against it for Joe Mixon to give a first, and I'm desperately trying to get their second back with it. Either just look at other avenues before. Like, he's my last resort. Okay, well, like, here's the other avenue, potentially, kind of like the Adam Thielen move, Raheem Mostert. I think I think people view him maybe a little bit below those guys. Although he could score just as high this year, you have the, the injury risk. And, yeah. you know, yeah, who knows what thing. will happen with A-Chan when he comes back. A-Chan's going to come back. Jeff Wilson's coming back. Um, I know he's been – he's 31 I still can't give a first for him. Oh, no, 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 no. Point. I'm saying he's the cheaper alternative. Yeah. I, I, think, I think he's like Adam Thielen in this where you could probably get him for at least a second, second, third. I was going to say my second is the best I would do for that. Yeah, I and would do a as second. As a contender, I would do a second for Raheem Mostert and no, nothing more. Yeah, and I and I think that's pretty fair. I haven't looked to see if it would get it done or not, but it, a late second, if I was in rebuild, that's what I would probably be looking for is, is a second for round For me, pick. for like that Joe Mixon – we you said, would you offer your first? I would much rather go find an avenue to get Tajay Spears and give more on top of that first than get Joe Mixon because I feel like their value on a points per game basis, potentially going forward, could be a lot closer than I would want it to be. Um, so for me, Joe Mixon's a last resort. Is he worth a first, a late first, if you had to do it to contend? Yes, but I don't love it. Yeah, Mostert for a second, Mostert for a third and fourth, uh, Mostert and a fourth for a third and Michael Mayer. So it seems like we're in a similar-ish range here. Most it for Kendry Miller. Uh, that one makes no sense. That must be redraft because it's most it for Austin Eckler. Um, Whoa. Yeah, most it for a second. So, yeah, I think a second or fair. a third plus might get it done. It'd be hard to give him a third because a third's such a non-enticing pick. But, like, if you can give, like, two thirds yeah. maybe, but I would rather just get right Andrew fourth, Andrew and fifth. Get a second. <laughs> All right, that's it for the nerd. Uh, Shout out to the nerd for everybody who left a rating and review uh, last week on the podcast. We really do appreciate it. If you do enjoy the show, uh, make sure you hit up whatever platform you, whether it's Google Play or the App Store. Uh, Leave us a rating and review. Helps the show and uh, helps us out. We'll be back next week. Hopefully, uh, we can avoid the death slap and not lose all our running I won't be here next week, though. It's it's just the two of you It won't be. Yeah, you won't be here. Garrett's going uh, to go tan his buttocks. That's right. Can't wait to see the Speedos tan, uh, for Heine. Days. Can't wait. You're going to avoid the death slap either. Yes, way. I don't want the death slap. <laughs> we'll be back next week as a duo. Adios.